Hi, this video is about how it's getting hotter and hotter for people who make YouTube videos to make money, at least from AdSense, from revenue directly from YouTube. And if you're a content creator out there making videos on YouTube, you already know that. I'm gonna go into some details and I'm sorry to say that, you know, looking forward, it's not, things are not looking up. I'm starting here in this uh, little plaza, I guess a strip mall is what we would call it in America. Because six years ago, or a little less than six years ago, when I moved into this neighborhood, uh, Ekamai in Bangkok, this place that I'm pointing the camera at right now was a coffee shop. It was a nice little place where about 10 a.m., would be a gathering place for what we've uh, come to know as keyboard warriors or, or digital nomads. Guys who are making their living with a keyboard, with a computer. And I met some really colorful folks here. One of them was a, a guy named Richard. I'm gonna call him Ducati guy. I like, I particularly like Richard because he was a, he was a fun guy. He was a hard drinking, hard working, uh, affable individual. And he made his money uh, with the Facebook marketplace. He used to uh, buy bulk items from Alibaba, the Chinese version of, of Amazon. And he would uh, ship those, those, those items to a place in the Philippines where he had six people working for him. And they would repackage those items and ship them out to people that he would sell them to. And he was the guy behind the whole operation. He would uh, do the buying from Alibaba and other sources, and, and he would do the marketing on Facebook Marketplace. And then it would be shipped from the Philippines. Now, this guy was very detail-oriented. He knew his statistics, he knew markets, uh, he knew how to advertise, and he worked his ass off. I mean, this was not an easy way to make a living, but he was, a keyboard warrior, he was able to go anywhere in the world that he wanted to, uh, to, to do this from. He did have to t make occasional flights to the Philippines to make sure that was being managed properly. But he liked Bangkok and he lived here and he was doing well. He bought a Ducati and he was really proud of his Ducati. And, I, you know, I'm going to call him Ducati guy. Well, these days, Ducati guy and keyboard warriors like him have, uh, have kind of faded away for a lot of reasons. And I'm gonna tie that into what's going on with YouTube right now as well. For businesses to survive, they have to grow and adapt to the environment that they're in. This is KZN Coffee today, a much different place than it was six years ago. KZN Coffee has uh, grown and adapted and uh, hung on through uh, lockdowns and pandemics and uh, it's still here today. And the food is good and the coffee's good, but that grassroots feel that it once had of local people just coming to hang out and you know, and while away the hours on their keyboards talking to each other and you know, it's, it's just not the community that it once was. It's a business and it's a big business. They have another location now as well. And the reason I'm not bringing it into this video is because in order to survive, you need to change and adapt. And for YouTube content creators, that is certainly the case now. I was first alerted to uh, the drop-off in revenue or the drop-off in views in my case. I'm not monetized, so I don't make any money on YouTube. But I do watch the statistics and my modest channel dropped off by 42%. I was like, WTF, and like most individual entrepreneur types, I thought, well, what am I doing wrong? But I have a couple of other friends who make videos too, and they are monetized, and they do talk to me about their statistics and the money stream coming in, and you know, and they give me some insight into, uh, into what it's like to be a monetized YouTube creator. And both of them were complaining that their revenue was dropping off as well. It was a third guy who has kind of a big growing channel. And I'm going to talk all about more all about these guys and 
some statistics because I did a deep dive into all of this and what I found out was was worse than I would have predicted. The value in doing YouTube videos for me has been in the people that I've met in this endeavor. I've become friends with uh, with a handful of other creators uh, here in, in Thailand as well. Uh, two in particular stand out. One is Bill from Unseen uh, Thailand Chiang Mai. He and I have become uh, pretty good friends. And through Bill, I also met Greeny of Greeny Travels. And Greeny lives south of Bangkok in Na Jan Tiem, near Pattaya. And I've become, uh, become a friend of his as well. I've also met and totally admire uh, a guy named Pete at Tyrish Times. He's a young man. He's not my peer, uh, but he has a, a, an ethic, a work ethic and, and a value system that I admire. And he's been doing really well on YouTube as well, mostly with interviews. There's a fifth channel uh, that I am going to include in this analysis as well, and that's CB Media because he's located, he, he's based out of, out of Bangkok as well. Uh, he has a very specific niche in the uh, automotive sports niche, and he's doing very well with it. And I met Chad about two and a half years ago. I actually hired him as a consultant to come in and, and, and advise me on how to set up a YouTube channel, and he did that, and it was uh, money well spent. I, I certainly appreciated uh, the, the chat, uh, the three-hour chat that I had with Chad. He came and had lunch. It was, uh, he's, he's a cool guy. I like him. So, uh, and, but again, he's very successful. And I wanted to include him on this analysis as well. So there are five channels. Myself, uh, Unseen Thailand Chiang Mai, Greenish Travels, uh, Tyrish Times, and CB Media. So I, I went out and took a look at those five channels. And I was actually a little bit surprised at what I found. Using views as a metric, I took those five channels and I looked at how many views their most recent seven videos received, and then I averaged that out. And I compared that average of their most recent seven videos with the seven videos that preceded it. So I compared those two seven view averages, and this is the result that I got. My channel, Charlie Hub, went down 42%. Unseen Thailand Chiang Mai and Greeny Travels, two channels that are comparable in size and, and viewership, both went down 32% each. Tyrish Times went down a whopping 64%, and CB Media, about the same size as Tyrish Times, maybe a little bit bigger, but a much more niche category, went down 62%. So those bigger channels went down a larger amount than the two medium-sized channels. This was a pattern that I wasn't expecting. It was kind of worse than I thought. And I communicated with Peter Tyrish Times, who also gave me the insight that uh, even on some of his videos where the views remained a little bit higher than average, his AdSense revenue went down on them as well. Now, there's complicated methods that YouTube uses to derive how much you get paid based on a lot of different things, and I'm not going to go into that here. But, uh, again, Pete said even on his videos that were getting high views, his revenues were still down. So, this is a pattern. This is a very distinct pattern. So, if there are any statisticians out there scratching their heads saying, yeah, you can't you know, define a general pattern for something as big as YouTube using only, you know, five examples. Yeah, yeah, I got that. But it does reveal a very possible pattern. And if there are, if there is anybody out there watching this that is seeing different results, if there's a channel maker who's growing right now, I'd love to hear from you. So if there are any people that have insight into these kinds of statistics that, uh, that, that, think what I'm showing here is an anomaly, I would love, love to hear, um, hear why you think that. Because I don't think so. And let me tell you why. There's a reason that I waited till today to make this video. Today is July 27, a Wednesday here in Thailand. And I waited till today to make this video 
because last night, Tuesday evening in New York, after the stock market closed, Alphabet, the parent company of Google and YouTube, was making an earnings statement. And while the earnings of Alphabet have been lower than what was expected, they singled out YouTube. I wanted to wait for this earnings announcement to see what they said about YouTube and ad revenue around YouTube, and they did single out YouTube as being a bit of a problem. I'm going to quote exactly what they said. And they said, in addition to the overall pullback in ad spending, YouTube is also facing heightened competition from TikTok in short videos. Now, none of this is surprising information, but it's official now. And I'm going to talk a little bit about why I know that that is a problem going forward for uh, YouTube content creators, just based on my personal experience. The facts that I have for you are that five channels that I analyzed are down a collective 46.4% in viewership of their last seven videos compared to the seven videos prior to that. And the management, actually the chief of financial officers who made this statement, flagged YouTube as a, uh, as a revenue problem going forward for Alphabet, the giant Google that we all know so well. And as we all know these days, there are economic problems going on in the world. There's high inflation, uh, especially in the United States and Europe, and businesses are struggling. You know, revenue is down. This is not going to be a tutorial on finance, but I do know finance pretty well. And one of the first things that goes south during a contraction, during an economic contraction, is spending on advertising. Now again, all the YouTube content creators that I've spoke to are already aware of this because their AdSense revenue is down and viewership is down. Again, I'd love to hear from anybody that's having a different experience than that uh, who makes videos on YouTube. But yeah, ad spending is going to be down for a while. Plus the competition from TikTok may change things for YouTube going forward. Now, it would be a very legitimate question to ask, how does a guy like me, uh, you know, a retired fireman and yoga teacher, uh, become a finance expert? Well, I'll tell you, my first job, uh, my first real job in the world back in 1970 was a sales job on Wall Street. So I worked in a business, it was an employment agency business that was very much tied into the ups and downs of Wall Street. And that was going on a lot back in the 70s. There's been a lot more economic stability over the last 20 years than there was back in the 70s. There, there was back then what we're experiencing now, high inflation and low growth. That's what we're up against now. Now, there was a contraction in 07, 08. And again, I had some very direct personal experience with that. I had gone into a small business, the yoga business, in 2005. I had two yoga studios. I had anywhere between 9 and 15 employees. It was a small business. And I learned, after having spent 20 years working for the government as a fireman, um, I, I learned just how difficult small businesses can be. And, you know, the yoga business is a fairly simple business compared to others. So I've grown a great deal of respect for entrepreneurs. I also had the advantage of a good pension to rely on which I still do today. So that puts me in you know, a, a very comfortable position to go out and, and try new things. People who have to rely on the income that they produce themselves to make a living, there's a whole lot more pressure on them. And, and again, kudos to you. I, I really respect entrepreneurs. But what happened is, I, you know, the first two and a half years of my experience in the yoga business was fun. I was advertising, I was growing the business, and I was watching the numbers go up. And then sometime during the last half of 2007, 25% of my business disappeared over a six-week period of time. It was like, WTF? And, uh, you know, I found out that that was a result of what we now call the Great Recession, 
uh, was these banking products that very few people understood. Even the people that were trading things like uh, collateralized debt obligations and default swaps and things of this nature, even the people trading them didn't completely understand them. And I wanted to know what was going on with that because it affected me personally. So that's when I started studying finance in a formal way. And I've taken some uh, courses from Yale University and another one from Harvard. You can do a lot of things online these days for free. And I've been following finance pretty regularly. I do some investing myself. Uh, individual, I'm an individual investor and I follow the Forex market as well. And I'm pretty good at spotting big trends. And I see a trend coming here for YouTube that we need to be alerted to. YouTube or Alphabet is telling us, watch out, things are changing. You know, revenue is down in that department. Now, I don't think YouTube is going to go away. The first two years of YouTube was not profitable for Google. And uh, they built it into this profitable platform, but things are going to change. So I don't think it's going away. And again, competition from TikTok is going to make a big difference as well. YouTube does have a short platform, but it sucks. I don't even put my shorts on that. And I make shorts. I make shorts for TikTok and Instagram. I'll talk more about TikTok and Instagram and Facebook in other videos. Facebook, which is an advertising company, don't lose sight of the fact that these companies are advertising companies. That's what they do. Alphabet is an advertising company, and so is Facebook. And Facebook is um, actually losing money. They're not doing it even as well as Google. And I just want to make a little quote here from Mark Zuckerberg, the person everyone loves to hate, with good reason. He's kind of a dick. But he said, in addition to the overall pullback in ad spending, YouTube is also facing heightened competition from TikTok in short form videos. So yeah, TikTok is uh, setting, is uh, holding the fire to the feet of these big boys and uh, it's changing things. Uh, yeah, Zuckerberg, when he announced layoffs, also made the statement that, yeah, there's a lot of people that shouldn't be working for us anyway. I mean, the man's really a dick. He's hard to feel sorry for. But nonetheless, this is part of the larger macro trends that I see happening here. You know, for those of you who are reliant on AdSense for your income, you need to be aware of this. You probably already are aware of it. It's going to continue for a while, and there are going to be changes here that you're going to have to adapt to. You know, again, I don't want to be smug. I'm comfortable. I don't need the revenue. Neither does Bill, neither does Greeny. But people like uh, Tyrish Times, although Pete is pretty smart too, he knows that this is probably a temporary thing. Uh, as for Chad at CB Media, I hope you're doing well, Chad. And anybody else out there, you know, just know that y y you have to uh, expect changes to be happening. Like the keyboard warriors of five or six years ago who are probably driving taxis these days or something different than what they were doing back then. Changes are coming here for content creators on YouTube as well. What that's going to look like exactly, nobody knows for sure. Well, maybe people inside of YouTube know, but they're not saying. And, you know, be aware. You know, awareness and, you know, being conscious of the issue is, is, is the first step in protecting yourself. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.